So here we are again, just uh, having a great time here and uh, doing uh, horrible things to people as usual. Yes, I will kill someone on film. <laughs> hey everybody, Matt from Gun here. I'm on location in Los Angeles at the House of Moves. We're gonna be filming some motion capture for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We got a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. On Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the film, there was a lot of terror, there was a lot of uncomfortableness in the way the characters moved, in the way they felt. So if you try to translate that to a, to a video game, really the motion capture is where it starts. Stay right there, that's good. So motion capture, what many people don't understand, is different from performance capture. Um, there's lots of different ways to do video games. Performance capture, you get your body, your face, your voice. Motion capture is you're just doing your body. Every single ball, you see on me is a sensor the computer picks up. So when I do this, we as actors get to see on screen the animated character moving. That's the beauty of motion capture is that you can set up an environment anywhere. You layer out the space and then it's your play world. And so the energy that I get from the other actors is what it, I need because I have to create everything else around me. And so the one thing that's true is you. The one thing that's true is me. And then we can live together in that reality that we've created. And that's the glory of motion capture. Thank you. If you think about a basic character, uh, the different states that you go through if you're playing a game. So really you have the walk or even a crouch or have a sprint. And then at any moment, you could attack or open a door or pick up an item. So really, it's about trying to understand every movement you okay. want. That way we have the hammer in there where you can break it off separately. And another one of yeah. these, too. Yeah. All of a sudden, you have 500 shots you have to get, which are multiple animations per shot. And then you try to book the, enough time to capture those and hope that you get it done. So really, it's, it's very organized chaos. I like that faster kind of... Crazy yeah, just more, there's a lot more energy there. Yeah. It wasn't about cutting something out, but more back on speed enough. Yeah. Just felt more frantic. Really what we're looking for throughout this whole entire session is do they look like they would if they were in the film? Really that's what we're trying to capture. So. And three, two, one, action. <laughs> the other people that are doing motion capture are a number of very experienced motion capture actors. So that helps just knowing the process because it's a whole different deal than just shooting film. I mean, movie aside, you don't do it for this many hours. At least the same thing over Action. and over. <laughs> At least you're filming like a scene for maybe an hour and then you're moving on and then maybe it might be a happy scene. Um, this might be a little bit more tougher, I, th I think. What's been really interesting about motion capture for me is the specifics that you need um, in an acting piece. If I was to just do a slash, I might feel it in the moment. I might get really prepared and just do what feels right. Yeah, you can do that. It's almost like that. dancing. There's there a choreography go. to it. Um, yeah. Dancers have to have that emotion, yeah. but they actually have to know where they're going to be on the stage. Being a dancer, I think, gives you uh, you have superpower as an actor, maybe. <laughs> Actually, that's a pretty good way to put it. <laughs> Where you can use your body in, and, and know, have, have command of certain things and know you can do things and, and or how to bring them to life. Uh, using those skills as a dancer to, to build character, actor moments, you know, recognizable things. We want someone that can move like Sally towards the end of that film. She can barely walk, she can barely run. You can just feel the emotion as you watch it. It's, it's uncomfortable. So when we look at movement in our game, we need to capture that. So we needed actors, specifically actors in horror or close to it that could give us what we were looking for. We decided this time to bring in some actors that are known for horror. Even though they're not playing a character that they necessarily played, they're just great actors. Now here's a little bit of horror trivia. This is why 
Uh, I feel a little ashamed. I never saw the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Watched it several times to really get the essence of him. Roach, in a weird way, and People Under the Stairs was very similar to the idea that it was fun to mess with the people in People Under the Stairs to protect the little girl. Well, he was a good guy, but the hitchhiker enjoys messing with people to terrorize them. <laughs> and then go back to standard. And you can never play a bad guy. You, there's no such thing as being a bad guy. You don't think you're a bad guy. All you think you're doing is having fun. It's just to you, having fun in your world means lives don't matter. Nice. Invite me to your next birthday party. <laughs> It's been really neat with, you know, Kane and the guys from the game really letting you cut loose physically, which again, I've never really, really done because it's just not the parts smaller, you know, boyish faced men get. Action. <laughs> Back to Idaho, cut. And, and you know when we're, we're doing the motion capture stuff about hitting someone over the head with a broomstick, like, okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm old. I'm, I'm not gonna take a big whack at it. And you, you calculate all those things. What creates that character? You know, the mood, the environment, the age, the muscle, the, the weight, the, and it's, it's kind of creating your own personal algorithm for, for everything that you're gonna oh do. Oh my God, help me! <laughs> I think a lot of people um, underestimate how difficult it is to play a character like Leatherface or Jason or anything because they say, well, he doesn't talk and there's no facial expressions. How hard can it be? And my point is that's exactly why it is more difficult because you don't have those tools. How do you look scary just by the way you stand without making it look like you're trying to look scary? Point being, with Leatherface, I'm trying to incorporate what I did in the past, partially, because I did do a number of scenes as Leatherface, and also out of respect to Gunnar Hansen, who was the first Leatherface. That's the iconic one, you know, the first time you see the character, and, he did so many amazing things. I, I'm trying to incorporate some of his personality traits, like a little bit of a twitch, and you know, even though you're never going to see it, I do what Gunner did as the character a lot. I lick my teeth. Gunner did that a lot. It was creepy as hell. before this is over. So Sissy <laughs> is a new character. So she's not based on the movie, which a lot of the other characters are. Considering how iconic all the other characters from Texas Chainsaw are, like, you know, how do you make Sissy fit into the family and be as exciting and as interesting? Like on the outside, she wants people to really love her and like her, so she can be really sweet, but then she has major anguish. <laughs> so just like you say the wrong thing and she's just flips a switch. <laughs> the bad man's inside me. He's gonna come get you soon. <laughs> I'm gonna find out what you taste like. Johnny is a new character, never been before seen, not in the canon yet of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's the guy you'll meet at the bar in town that'll talk to the ladies, get him to feel very comfortable and then bring him down to the house. And then he turns into a not so nice guy when the bad man takes over. You know, a lot of people think that horror movies and, and playing a victim is pretty easy, but it, it's, it really does a lot of damage to your body and to your emotional state. And I feel like not a lot of people can get to that vulnerable state. I take the victim work very seriously because it is a lot of trauma, a lot of work to get into that mindset and also ground yourself through the reality of the characters. And it's that confrontation, that lift and rise of energy where our hackles go up, the hair on the back of our neck, and it's just kind of 
tightening in, living through the eyes and really connecting with your partners. And they're so great. They're feeding all this wonderful energy and it's just smothering you. It, it definitely helps that sort of emotion come out of a video game. And I think, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you butthole. They're all game to, you know, take a little bit of um, physical wear and tear during the motion capture because you need to do it a little bit. I've worked with him on on sets as actors, as like an actor, so we've we've had like some pretty brutal scenes together, but we've never I've never seen Kane's side of like stunt coordinating and I mean this is what he he does. It's like his bread and butter, so I felt very safe with him here. Um, and he's very knowledgeable. I mean Kane's just a goofball in general, so I love him so much. Hired her. I don't know. You? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. With Kane as a stunt coordinator, we're actually getting the chance to get very physical and very violent safely. Kane has been really good at just watching all of us and making sure the movements are big enough and believable enough and that our whole, you know, our whole body is in it. Even though you don't see a facial uh, expression, you, you can tell when somebody gets okay, hit cool. harder. That's You're right. doing your hand or your elbow? I'm doing this. Forearm. Okay. Yeah. Just Pop him. Yeah, okay. You gotta hit him so he can react. Kane yeah. yesterday was like, you know, this is really good, but Sean, you have to understand when you do the knife slashes, it's gotta look like you're hitting him so you can go harder. And that's a weird thing because then you gotta go to your stunt guy and go, are you cool? Yeah. Yes, I am cool. Go for it. Don't worry. And, you know, and then just really letting loose and wailing on him and trusting. They have, you know, it's cushioned. It's not gonna hurt him. None of the weapons we're using are necessarily real. I mean, I could still take one of those fake weapons and it could still kill you. And I may before this interview is done. So when you come into it, you go, oh, I think this is going to work right here. You're a little a little worried because you never really know how it's going to translate. But here we are close to the end and the performances that we've gotten. Man, it's just, it's incredible. Any time in which I can live out both fantasies and nightmares for the fans and for the people who are going to be playing these games. It is such a sweet, golden opportunity. I'm a huge Texas Chainsaw fan, so um, to be able to create Sissy was like a dream. Everyone here behind me and the way they're working and putting this thing together, so much is going into it and uh, it's amazing. It's just a really fun group of people, and man, uh, when you play Never Have I Ever, when you're not drunk, you get to know someone really well. This kind of stuff brings you together, and I think everybody's so badass for their own individual, like, you know, quality. And These producers, this team here has been fantastic. We're joking, we're having fun, it's amazing I get paid for this. People are going to play a character in a video game that is actually me. It's just mind-boggling to think about. All the characters, all the animations, all the features um, kind of tie together and they pay tribute and respect to the film. Really, that's what we're about, is trying to make sure that when you play our game, it looks and feels like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre.